Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. Fantastic. Then I won't have to amplify. We're going to get our session rolling, going this morning. I'm Rich Heller. I'm a professor of urban forestry at the University of Wisconsin Stevens Point. It's not about me, it's about the students in this lightning round that we'll be hearing this morning. Well, with no further ado, I'm going to introduce our first speaker, Valentino Cristini. And he's from the Mendel University in Bruni um, in the Czech Republic. He's going to be talking about a really important topic on biodegradation of wood in the case, you know, with tree risk assessment. But he was born in northern Italy and in uh, 2012, about 10 years ago, moved to the Czech Republic to attend uh, a university there that he's at currently to study arboriculture and urban forestry. He's been a, a lecturer there in the fields of tree risk assessment, biomechanics, and phytopathology. Since uh, 2018, he's been uh, working on a technical standard for tree work, which is really, really important, a working group. Now, he's been working on his PhD, which you'll hear uh, part of his work here uh, this morning, and in particular with the bio uh, deterioration of wood and standing trees and its material strength properties. So with no further ado, Valentino, I'll turn the floor over to you. Thank you very much. But first, I would like to thank you all to be here at such a human time, 8 a.m. At least it was unhuman for me, but because I'm Italian. And of course, I, I can't see any Italians here in this room. So it confirmed my hypothesis. As it was already said, I'm going to talk about wood degradation and the complex degradation of standing trees in the urban environment. Why do we need to talk about trees and decay? Because there is a rising awareness about standing trees and mature trees in the urban environment. And thanks to that, they also the need to check them, to conserve, to preserve mature trees infected and colonized by decay fungi is increasing. On the other side, a really big problem in the urban environment is the high value of the target. So due to that, we need to assess mechanical properties of standing trees and mechanical properties of degraded wood through the tree stability assessment. One of the ways to assess it is through non-destructive techniques, as for example, acoustic tomography. And with acoustic tomography, we measure, of course, mechanical properties of a certain cross-section that we are measuring. And if we look at this picture, that's the famous triangle of stability. I think that most of you know it, and because in arboriculture we love triangles. We extremely love them, and they're pretty easy to understand. And if you look at the three parameters that we can see here, we decided in our research to focus on just one of them, and that's the material. Material properties of green wood, and this is the specific material properties of degraded green wood by different wood decay fungi in in situ and in vitro environment. So what about our experiments? Everything started with the first experiment when we assessed three, two, two different beech trees, standing beech trees, colonized by wood decay fungi. So each tree was assessed on two different levels with acoustic tomography. And after the assessment, each tree was felt. We removed cross section, two cross sections for each layer. One cross section was destined to mechanical and acoustic testing. And the second cross section, the thinner one, was used for fungal isolation. So thanks to that, we were able to know the mechanical properties in a detailed way, uh, thanks to a regular grid of 5.5 centimeters, and uh, we were able to compare it with the fungal colonization on each layer. If uh, we look at the result, of course, here you can see the real state of the cross-section, the result from acoustic tomographies. Of course, there is one cross-section for each tree, just present, of course, we have just 10 minutes. Also, here you can see, here's a map created by the mechanical measuring, the destructive mechanical measuring, and there is the compression strength of the cross-section. If you look at this graph, you can see the comparison between velocities measured by the acoustic tomographs and velocities measured in the laboratory environments. According to that, we can see a really similar trend. So we can say that the velocities measured with acoustic tomographs are trustworthy, so we can believe them, and according to them, we can have a better interpretation of the mechanical property of the cross-section. If you look at the last picture, we can see the differences in fungal colonization on, the different, on different layers. With tree number one, it was a smaller tree. It, has a DBA, it had a DBH of, I think, one half of the DBH of the second tree. And you can see that the fungal colonization is not so heterogenic. 
we just have, uh, you know, notus cuticularis and uh, Famulina velutipes in the bottom part. But if we look at the second tree, which was already bigger, it had a DBH of more than one meter, we can see a more heterogeneic uh, fungal colonization. And it's really interesting to see the difference between two different eyes. The two layers were distant from each other, one and a half meter. So on the bottom part, we can still find Kretschmeria, but if we look at the top part, already we are talking about, about a completely different colonization. It means completely different wood decay patterns, and also it means completely different response to acoustic signals. So what we did after that? We compared the measured properties with non-destructive testing, it means velocities, with the compression strength. And uh, we came to the conclusion that if we take into consideration another properties, physical properties, which is green wood, uh, green wood density, we can reach better results and we can have a better regression, a stronger regression, as you can see here with the dynamic modulus of elasticity, instead with just the uh, velocity of stress wave propagation. So if during the interpretation of the results of acoustic tomography, we take into consideration also absurd values of the degraded wood and also intact wood, which is the green density, we can have better results and uh, more detailed, a more detailed description of the state of the cross section. From that experiment, we isolated a culture of Kretschmeria de Usta. And of course, because we have an in situ situation, we have the natural situation, but we don't know one of the main variables, which is time. So due to that, we decided to have an in vitro experiment with just one of the most important fungi that we can find on the beech trees, which is Kretschmeria de Usta. And after a three months inoculation time in color flasks, we had the possibility through an electron microscope to see all the different level of decay of, uh, of, soft, of soft rot that we can see. As you can see here is a reference samples of intact wood. Here you can already see small uh, holes and cavities in the S2 layer of libriform fibers. Then all these cavities are connecting to each other and the only thing that remains at the end of the degradation, at the uh, final stage of the degradation, is the intact middle lamella, which is mostly compiled by lignin. So that's why uh, soft rot, it's really similar from an anatomical point of view to brown rot. And because it was an in vitro situation and we knew that the degradation was caused just by Kretschmeria de Usta, we had a better way to, have, uh, to interpret the data and to see the relationship between velocities and dynamic modulus of elasticity to the bending strength in this case. As you can see here, when we are using the, the dynamic modulus of elasticity here and here, we still have a better trend and a stronger regression than, we are, than uh, when uh, we are using just uh, the, velocities, uh, the velocity of wave propagation, or sound wave propagation. And a really important thing is that when we take into account green density, we can use the same regression for degraded samples and also intact ones but if you take into consideration just sound wave, uh, sound wave propagation, we can see that uh, the linear regression used for degraded wood, it's not the same as the one which should be used for the intact sample. So if we, at the end, if we are talking about all the conclusions that we, are, we got during these two experiments, we found the most important part is that, that we need to use absolute values for a better interpretation. Because right now we are just working with relative values on a reference velocity is normally measured on the periphery of the trunk. But in a future, if we can achieve to create a big and uh, big, pretty big uh, catalog of material properties of greenwood intact and degraded, we can reach more detailed results of non-destructive testing. Of course, because I just had 10 minutes to present our research, and if you are interested in it, you can have a better look and a more detailed look at it, and you can, watch, uh, you can take a look at our papers. We have really good pictures in them, so if you like them, so you can take a look. And from outside was everything. Thank you very much for the exchange. Question over here. Who's your
four. Yeah, I'll try. I'll try. <laughs> well, you know, um, so now you're testing compression or green wood. Yeah. Also the elasticity of it. Yeah, it depends. Uh, the first testing on the cross section, it was compression strength. Mm -hmm. uh, on the second experiment, it was bend strength. Yeah, also twisting. Uh, bending. Three point, oh, okay. three point bending. Yeah. Uh, the fact is, is the compression strength. It's uh, most important because if you take bending, if you take a stem which is bending around, uh, the the lower strength is on the compression side. If you compare, we are talking about uh, an anisotropic material, uh, and uh, in, with compression we have a lower strength than in tension. So normally during bending we have the first failure part on the compression side, and then due to a movement of the stress you have then a uh, uh, breakage on the tension side. How often you see the trees, trees fail in tension, in twisting? Yeah, in torsion. In torsion. Yeah. So also, when you have a breakage, you see these tiny spikes. It's not just like a clean bending break. Yeah, it, it never, it never. No. No. So, so the testing, the twisting, it might be. It's also, I think, really interesting to see in green with the effect from that. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's good. that's a good idea. The, the only problem is that we have a different uh, cross section. Yeah. So if you take the section modulus of a normal, you know, uh, standard bending sample, because the bending samples that we use, for example, for the inoculated samples with Krechmara de Usta, they were uh, a smaller ratio of the standardized samples which are used for mechanical testing of wood. And uh, now with, uh, we have another project, we are working uh, on, the, on the hypothesis that the values that we calculate on small samples can be applied on bigger scales. So on bigger, bigger samples to reach the line, the, the line stem and to reach the standing trees. So all the different steps to the laboratory assessment. But I hope to, we will have some uh, published results by the, end of, by the end of next spring. Thank you. Thank you. Research that you were doing, you were focusing on two samples from beech trees. Uh, if you were to, let's say, recreate this for other tree species, maybe conifers, uh, would you use the same methodology, or because of the different wood characteristics, would you change uh, something, uh, one of your factors, one of your variables, maybe looking for maybe tension instead of compression? Would you just try to use the, the same metrics? Uh, at the beginning of my PhD, uh, I wanted to test five fungal species on uh, five different wood species. Uh, after four years, I had one wood species <laughs> with two fungal species with Prechmaria and Fulness. And uh, right now, we're preparing a test for incipient decay just on beach and linden wood. So now we moved to the diffuse pore structure. And now we're moving bit by bit, just step by step, but yeah, we would really like to expand also to conifers and then to, to, uh, to soft wood. And uh, I would uh, apply the same approach. Yeah, uh, of course it can be, it will be a different approach within the interpretation of acoustic tomography, also because we have a different uh, moisture content trend among the cross section from the periphery to the center. So, and also uh, it's a thing about wood density. Of course, the dispersion and the, the movement of wood density from the center to the periphery is the opposite in soft wood and in hard wood. So, of course, those are parameters that we are going to take into consideration. But uh, I think that we will uh, we will remain with bending and compression testing. Also, because uh, another group is working on numerical modeling, and when you are doing numerical modeling of, of trees. You normally have to create uh, numerical models of green wood, and they end with bending, because bending uh, contains all the other kind of stresses that you can have in it. So that's why we're going bending, and just to uh, test if it is right, we are also going compression. So if you have to, because we don't we don't know for sure that the same relationship between bending and compression is the same for intact and degraded wood. So that's why we are testing these these two kind of tests. Thank you. Well, thank you. Boy, if you wondered why did I get up this morning, yeah. this is why. <laughs> this is phenomenal. I appreciate your presentations from kind of the birth to the longevity of the urban forest. And we do have a gift for all these wonderful speakers. Mm -hmm. Sanyo, thank you so much. Thank Round of applause. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you.